Good morning. And what a great day it is, as Mr. Rogers used to say, in our neighborhood. It's 64 degrees today in New York City, and it's bright and sunny. I wish I could say the same about all the issues and news that has come out recently on our corporations. Now I finally understand. I know what late stage capitalism is. I understand what the age of surveillance capital is. And if you don't, well, I got to tell you, because if you don't know, what you don't know will hurt you. Our data is not secure. Our data is curated for us. And our data is sold to other people. I try to opt out of a couple of websites and meetup groups and other groups that said to me, oh, you can accept or agree not to accept our cookies policies. So I said, okay, what happens if I don't want to accept? Well, the very answer was, I had no choice. I had to accept. And all of this goes back to a little known law that was attached to the Communications Decency Act of 19. 96, Section 230. In those days, there wasn't any surveillance capitalism, meaning there was no real neoliberalism in place where there was very little regulation of corporations, where we said corporations could be self-regulatory, and we insisted upon small government. But this was the beginning. Section 230 was initiated so that CompuServe and Progeny, the two internet providers to the web at the time, were being sued for content. Section 230 said they didn't have the means to look into the content of people who were using their websites. That was the beginning. Today, we have no privacy and no regulation of Amazon, Google, Facebook, and other metadata collectors because of Section 230. Of course, there was no surveillance capitalism at the time. They were just merely providing a service, and they didn't look at the content, and the content did not feed their revenues. That wasn't their profit model. Their profit model was to get people to use the Internet. Simple as that. 25 years later, hey, that's the model for today is who we are is really important to all the social media platforms, to Verizon, and to anyone else who is participating in the World Wide Web. Everything that we do, say, think, and if we think out loud, somehow or other, it's codified and it's used. So I think Section 230 deserves to be amended at this point. Certainly, California, Washington, D.C., they're chipping away at Amazon, at Google. The EU is chipping away at their powers and saying, you're responsible for your data and your content on your web and who you sell people's data to. They're looking at people's privacy. We can't do it here until we amend Section 230. The laws 
have been used against us. I don't know if any of you remember the Merino Law. The Merino Law is the law that destroyed the investigative and enforcement capabilities of the DEA. They had a lot of corporations in their sights before the opioid epidemic became an epidemic. They could have gone after distributors, manufacturers, dispensaries, drugstores, anyone. But the law was changed, oddly enough, or not so oddly enough, by a Republican lawmaker by the name of Marino to say that if a corporation says they didn't have mal intent, then you know what? You couldn't prosecute them or force them to amend their practices, their illegal practices. The DEA, they just couldn't do anything but watch the horror unfold. And we're all suffering for these amendments because once again, corporations are self-regulatory and self-regulatory means they do nothing. Now, the FDA is going before Congress to amend their fee structure to the pharmaceutical industry, uh, device industries, I guess uh, baby formula industries, all the industries that would come under their purview for enforcement of regulatory laws. And what did I find out? Luckily, it's being reported, reported in The Guardian and other newspapers that the FDA has a fee structure for pharmaceutical companies. But they don't do the fee structure on their own and say, hey, this is what you comply with. No, it's a negotiation with the pharmaceutical companies, with the lobbyists, on how much money they should be paying in fees for the FDA to set regulations for new products and to enforce old regulations on the books. Well, I know that if you negotiate a deal with someone, you owe them. The FDA should be freestanding. They should charge fees that will compensate them for the amount of investigation and enforcement of good manufacturing practices across the board. What else did I find out? Baby formulas are not even regulated. They're out of the FDA's purview along with devices, along with compounding groups. It's no wonder we don't have any oversight on Abbott Labs. Nobody's there to enforce oversight. So Abbott just elected not to improve their manufacturing process not to invest the money in clean baby formula. And so many, many people suffered. Babies suffered. Parents suffered. I spoke to a friend of mine who said their grandchild was uh, formed prematurely, perfectly healthy young child. However, needs a special baby formula that only Abbott Labs was producing. And he couldn't get it. He was writing to friends in Arizona, in Oklahoma, so that they could have sufficient baby formula for his grandchild to survive. This to me is a dreadful, dreadful state of affairs. I knew as a young woman in my 30s, self-regulation is no regulation. 
I saw it at work. I saw it at Ford when we implemented our 300 products. If you said do it as needed, you might as well have not included it in the good manufacturing products, technical books. It didn't mean anything. You didn't have to purchase the product because nobody was going to use it. On the other hand, as I said before so many times when I was at Pfizer, the level of responsibility in 1979 and early 80s was so different than it is today. When I was there, we had contamination of our streptomycin. It was a P3 facility, not a facility where product is made out in the open. No siree. You had to dress up. We had a, our own air supply in there. No part of you was uncovered because these were sterile facilities. So we had contamination. Never went to the public. It did get caught in QC. We sat down, we solved the problem, we cleaned the room, and we were up and running in 12 hours. Abbott Labs, over six months, and they still haven't cleaned up their facility? With proper regulation, they would be shut down tomorrow. There's no excuse for harming the public. However, there's one political party where neoliberalism is the name of the game. And neoliberalism doesn't work for we the people. It takes away all of our protections. Our protections for clean air and clean water, our protection for clean food, for baby products, for drugs, you name it. We've lost our protections, and they need to be staffed. Every one of these agencies need staffing and a relook at the regulations. I'm pleased that investigative reporters are now back on the job looking at every agency once again because self-regulation of corporations has gone too far. Now, Ted Cruz decided he doesn't like the student loan program. He'd like to overturn it. The kids are delighted. A, they can't get jobs that will pay them enough money to get out of the debt that they have. And B, the universities are finally recognizing that they're overcharging kids, that it's impossible for a middle-class kid to pay the $70,000 in up fees. And that's not counting room and board and textbooks. So the kids have been finding out how much of their loans they can have forgiven and they're doing it in droves. So who's Ted Cruz going to support? Who's been harmed? The lending people? The banks? I don't think that I have to worry. They were getting 6% interest on their money anyway, far more than any other entity. Sure, 6% doesn't sound so much now, when mortgages are at 6% and higher. But it is to kids when they took out these loans and the Fed fund rate was either negative or 0.25%. And it's a little terrible that kids have to pay 6% interest on their money when you buy a Picasso or a Jeff Koons and you spend 100 million bucks. It only costs you 0.25% then. So where is the equality here? Where is the money for we, the people? Where is the money to protect us? I don't see it. And I don't see what's happening as being right for the working class, lower and middle class folks. 
They say there's a great resignation. Well, if you're not paying labor anyway, and unfortunately, probably half a million people left the workforce because they may have perished during COVID, or we've been draconian in our immigration laws for people who have been long-standing employees of this nation. So people in low-paying jobs are not around. But I understand in New York City, people in high-paying jobs aren't being hired either. And why is that? It's because the corporations are profit over everything. They've hollowed out the managers who would be the mentors to the millennials who need to know how to deal with people effectively, how to see a good interface between data collection and the customer or the consumer and management. They need the wisdom of those in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So I think we ought to take a look at what we're doing, folks. No regulation doesn't work for we the people. You can't go and vote reflexively anymore because when you do, those 24 states with Republican governors, hey, they're not for you and me. They're for the big money, the big corporations, the lobbyists, and that's who they're supporting in their laws. And those laws don't work for us. Do you want to go hunting for baby formula for your child or your grandchild? Do you want to have to worry? Do you want your privacy so invaded that your teenager or your child who happens to get on a website that their phone numbers and that your address is being given out to people who want to sell you products or whatever, other services? Don't we want protection of our food and our water and our drugs? Don't we want generics to come into being in this country or new research and development? You're not going to get it if the pharmaceutical industry is in a position of power on the FDA's fee structure. Why should they change? In fact, if you ask the patent attorneys, they'll let you know there are very few new patents being applied for. They're certainly not applied for in terms of research and development. So this a uh, cooperation between the FDA and the agencies that they're, they're supposed to regulate, that's got to stop. You can't have cooperation. The FDA should figure out what it costs them to regulate pharmaceuticals in a decent manner so that they can have inspections on a regular basis unannounced, and that they can enforce laws of cleanliness in all of these facilities. Can't have people self-regulating. Doesn't happen with us even when we have the best intentions on our own. Imagine when your structure says, the only thing I care about is profit, and profit is the only thing that matters. Do you think that a corporation is going to go against that mission statement? I don't think so. They're held to a standard every couple of months where they've got to show that they've made more money than ever before and give money to their shareholders. The system is rotten. And I think with a little bit of pressure, 
we can get the system back to where it was and where it should be for the 21st century. Thank you for listening. Sorry to go on and on, but there was a lot to cover. And God bless you. When you vote, and I know there's early voting starting now, think about what I've said and think, do you want to vote for these extremists who think about corporate profit as being more important than you and your way of life? And then don't press the button for them, please. <laughs>